Hello everyone, and welcome back to my complete career run through in Kerbal Space Program 0.23. And last time, to my great relief, we managed to get to Jeb Kerman and bring him into the rescue lander. Uh, not too far away either, 250 meters, not bad if I do say so myself. These proximity landing missions are the worst as far as I'm concerned, especially with an atmosphere. Atmospheric proximity landing missions, uh, they're, they're not my idea of fun, honestly. Um, but, but we got to him, and we can now bring him back. So let's retract the ladder. And our fuel situation is uh, quite excellent, actually. <laughs> actually, uh, I planned for a lot of margin in order to make sure that we could, uh, uh, you know, uh, fly around a bit just in case we weren't close enough. So, but our re-entry, uh, our entry into Duna turned out to be pretty good, so we didn't have to do too much of that. All right. Um, actually, honestly, we could probably bring them back straight if this thing had parachutes, but uh, we can't. That's one thing we can't do. Actually. Um, I'm gonna wait till Lambda 6 comes around before meeting up with it. So uh, let's actually extend the solar panels. Do I have this action group to 2? Yes I do. Oh wait, I only have those two. Actually those two should be fine, yeah, they're, they're recharging the electric charge. So that should be adequate. Alright, um, yep. I think we can time warp until Lambda 6 is overhead, I think will be best. Hmm. Well, we'll just get into a tighter orbit and then we can catch up if uh, it passes us by. This should be fine. Alright. Well, our little uh, rover wasn't any good because it just couldn't get past the lander legs. Bad planning on my part, but, you know. Whatever. It doesn't have a probe part, so uh, we can't really control it otherwise. So I'll just sort of sit here waiting for a Kerbal to join it. Then I guess we we could potentially send another mission with a precision landing. Well, maybe this lander itself uh, could return and uh, bring them to the rover, and then they can rove about. So it's it's not completely wasted, perhaps. All right. So without further ado, let's carefully get them off of the surface and to their return vehicle. Uh, this way. Don't want to be fooled by that. Uh, I want to retract the solar panels. We're still in the atmosphere. Get fooled by the little pink spot, but that's not really the direction we need to go in. It's a mighty, mighty lander. Looks quite Herculean like this. Okay, let's see what we can do to bring this in. It looks like we need to go faster. But there are many ways to do that. Good ways and bad ways. Let's say we do it closer to this node and bring that down. Ah, we seem to be doing better there. Good, good. That, that'll be fine. Alright, so let's burn that direction for a little bit. And that looks like a good intercept. Uh, probably barely need to burn at that point in order to match speeds with it. So, that'll be a good way to go. Ok. 
Okay, let's use some RCS to fix this up a bit. Okay, point two. Well, can't get too much closer than that. Alright, I think we can open this shield. And I'll have to go to this view in order to see when our actual encounter is. Of course, I could create a maneuver node at that point in order to see it as well, but this is good too. I like to stop about a minute before the encounter. Okay. Negative relative velocity. Let's get rid of some of that. Though we can get as close as 200 meters, right? So let's wait a bit. All right. It was a little bit uh, frame laggy for a sec there, and then it suddenly loosened up. Anyway, here we go. Let's fix this up a bit. Okay, I think what we need to do is, well, let's make sure we're lined up. Yeah, we are. Let's switch to the other one and make sure we're lined up. Okay. Yep, Jeb and Bob look uh, thrilled with the situation, as they should be. Sort of coming in at an angle. Hmm. Should be fine though. the magnetism and these two just never these two docking ports are a little bit faulty even around Kerbin orbit they weren't really happy with each other come on come on This is insane. Oh, finally. All right. All docked up. Unfortunately, unlike the Apollo missions, we do have to EVA them to move them from the from the lander can over, but All right, let's do that right now. Let's not have any suspense about it. Okay, gently. Gently. Come on. Uh, 
crab. Whoa. Board. All right. That uh, RCS port seems to be getting the way. Maybe make a note to myself not to put an RCS port right where the crew hatch is. All right. Uh, so it was Bill here. No, it's Bob. Bob. Okay, everybody is all in the correct place, but uh, we don't need to detach just yet. We might as well give them a little bit more living space as we time warp to make sure that Kerbin is in the right place. Alright, that's got to be our target. And we need it about 75 degrees behind Duna. Oh yeah, that problem. So let's focus on... Oh, I should have been in that view anyway. Come on, back to this view. And let's focus on the flag on... Well, no, let's focus on the flag on Duna that, uh, that Jeb planted. Oh, but it wants me to go to the pod. I don't want to go to that decrepit pod. Let's go to the flag here, yeah. Alright, so as I was saying, let's do some time warping. No need to set that as a target now, because we have to switch back before doing all that. Okay, we're getting uh, closer and closer now. You know, it occurs to me that, well, this is the flag time. I, I really need to get a time on how long Jeb actually spent on, on Duna. This is the flag on Ike, so it's not the same thing. Though it's probably close. Okay, I think that's that's about right. Okay, yeah, and I also wonder if anybody's uh, gotten a Kerbal uh, to stay out for like uh, more than 10,000 days. That would be crazy. Oh, Alright, so switch to this. Okay, now's the thing. So, what have we got here? Let's just see how much it costs before detaching the lander side. I'll we'll make sure I got the timing right and everything. Okay, wow, that's practically perfect. Um, yeah, alright. Uh, we'll get closer on the actual burn, I think. I don't want to try and fiddle with it right now. Well, maybe 80 is a little bit high. We do want to air break at uh, Kerbin. So we can't just leave it. Uh, we need to get it into the atmosphere. And this, this doesn't seem to be too bad. Looks like we can get it in easily. Yeah, a mid-course burn would sort things out there. Don't see... well, we're not in the same sphere of influence, so we can't see the ascending and descending node. But let me just give a uh, test tug to some things, just to see how they affect it. Okay, well that's not good. I think that's as close as I need to get right now. Alright, um, yeah, so this is fully fu fueled and it definitely has more than 500 delta V in it. So there's no particular reason why we need to keep the lander. We're all clear of it. Let's, uh, let's undock. So the lander will be available if uh, any Kerbals want to wander in and grab its fuel, I guess or use it to get back. It's got those two nukes. Could use it for a bunch of stuff. Um, I do want to... Our staging is totally weird. But I think uh, once we get away from the lander, some of that will sort itself out, so that's fine. Let me just uh, RCS away from it. 
Close up the hatch. We uh, didn't really use the solar panels on this side yet, I guess. So let's extend those. Oh, I guess we were uh, we withdrew them during the arrow breaking around Duna and just didn't put it out again. Of course, there was nothing that could consume electric charge during that time, so it's fine. Okay. Let's see which direction we need to be pointing in. And nine minutes. Okay, around here we need to probably start burning. Let me activate this engine. Uh, disconcerting to have those still visible. I, I trust I'm not going to be accidentally firing them or anything. Unlike the nukes, the poodle does not have overheating issues, so we can throttle it all the way up. So there they are, all three of them, Jeb, Bill, and Bob, back together again after quite a long time. Just this pod has been in orbit around Kerbal and then uh, Kerbin and in orbit around Duna for uh, 844 days. So, yeah, that gives the idea. Okay, 6.1. Let's get rid of the maneuver node so that I can see what's really going on here. Oh. Really? Okay. We have passed the point. Okay, that's not good. And now it's not even showing me my uh, periapsis distance. Hmm. Let me do a. Let me do some RCS test burns. Okay, that's closer. And that gets rid of it. And that's not good. Okay. Well, so much for getting really close uh, from out here, but we've got plenty of fuel so that we can correct that. And let's just get uh, around the sun to... Well, hmm, I guess we'll be uh, doing an inclination change pretty close to when we get out of Duna's sphere of influence. So, yeah, let me time warp and I'll meet you on the other side of this. Okay, so we've got an ascending node right here, so let's uh, use that to correct things. Uh, ascending node means that we need to go down. Okay, where did my node go so that I can see what's going on? Uh, that's 0.5. So if I go down, it disappears. That's helpful. Point one, okay. Point one is good. Now, can we get uh, something closer to Kerbin? The answer seems to be no. Uh, at least not with this burn. Alright, we'll take care of the inclination first then. So let's say out here, if I can get the blue one, instead of the purple resulting orbit, I need the blue orbit we have right now. Okay, right around here. And now let's see if that can help us get closer to Kerbin. 
Well, no luck getting it into Kerbin's atmosphere right now, because it's not cooperating with that notion. Oh, wait, 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 wait. There's a perturbation in our orbit that sort of indicates that we actually get closer to Kerbin. You see, uh, the resulting orbit has changed quite dramatically now. And if you get an orbit that's changed quite dramatically, that sort of suggests that you're hitting some sort of gravity. Ah, there we go. A gravitational body. Though how much you're hitting it by is still tricky. All right, uh, 288 sounds fine. It's certainly better than I was expecting just a few seconds ago. Uh, very, very difficult. There is a mod called Precise Node. I haven't tried it out that much though. But in theory it makes adjusting these nodes a little bit more clever. I wonder if it has a little periapsis. All I really need is a little display for the periapsis of my resulting um, after the burn orbit. That's that's all I really need. I mean, uh, tweaking these by mouse isn't a big deal. Actually, even uh, MechJeb and Kerbal Engineer. I mean, I don't think I don't remember seeing any sort of display for, you know, if you're tweaking a maneuver node, it'll show you your periapsis from the result of that. Might have to look into whether those mods have that sort of uh, display. Oh, it's not showing my periapsis anymore. Okay, maybe we're encountering something. Doesn't say so though. Well, we are... something is happening. Yeah, okay, there's the periapsis finally. Uh, okay, we're probably crashing into Kerbin now. Um, which is fine. Which is fine. It's practically what we want to do. We don't have any bits that need to remain in orbit. But, uh, yeah, we probably want to finesse it a little bit more than that. Alright, so... Gotta start time warping and I'll see you in Kerbin's Sphere of Influence. Okay, so here we are. And here we are with quite a lot of fuel, by the way. I think uh, this system with the with the stages, this uh, return stage and the other lander plus transit stage could probably be used for some sort of dual VAL mission. But... Whether I do that or not, uh, I have to ponder exactly what my next steps will be as we uh, really complete complete all the loose ends here as far as bringing Jeb back. Whether I want to do a jewel mission of some sort, whether I want to complete something that I didn't manage to do, like for instance landing on Moho, or whether I want to start building some sort of space station. Uh, these are all possibilities. Or whether I just want to see something about point two four, which might be interesting. Uh, I mean, we've completed career mode. We've uh, been to the spheres of influence of all the celestial bodies in Kerbal Space Program, doing experiments in each. We haven't landed on all of them, of course but we didn't need to in order to complete the tech tree so maybe it's about time for a new update to Kerbal Space Program not that we really need more content there's plenty more I could be doing but but the timing would be auspicious alright so yep three hours we'll wait for that uh, point, uh, 2.6 meter burn is uh, not something I want to try and do early 
I do want to get it at around tw uh, 28 ish. Yeah, I like that. Okay. I think, uh, yeah, I mean, look at all that fuel that we have left. Wow. Certainly created wide margins for this one. So this is a much more capable system. Yeah, we'll have to see what use we can put it to. All three are looking in wonderment. Nice that they actually have windows here, but I wonder if we can spot Minmus. I mean obviously we've got Kerbin in the moon. You know, it might be a good idea to make a controlled landing somewhere instead of just, uh, just aerobraking. Let's see if we can get into orbit via aer aerobraking. So maybe a little bit higher? I, I don't know the exact number that I would need. Possibly 30 would be good enough. If we end up landing straight, then that's fine, but... Okay, so shade within 30, and let's see if maybe this is good enough just to get into orbit so that we can uh, have a little bit more control of our landing, because we've got plenty of fuel here, and I would rather not land on the dark side. Alright, let's bring in the solar panels. I think the lights are alright, we've got... We've got Serious electric charge available. Let's orient retrograde. Frame stutter there. Alright, here we go for the arrow breaking round Kerbin, though not necessarily the landing. And you can see if we really did uh, go straight for landing here, we would be landing on the dark side. So that's what I didn't want to do. Okay, so now. Uh, we might be forced into it anyway. Let's see. The last bit of the orbit actually takes quite a lot, but we're quite far away from our, peri uh, from our periapsis, so... Let's see. Someone suggested that I should uh, perhaps try and get it back to one of the facilities here on Kerbin, but that's not going to happen. Alright, looks like we're going down. Came in too deep. Thankfully, without the need for heat shielding here, I was able to keep the service module. I suppose even now I could probably boost it to orbits. This thing has enough power. Actually, let me... Let me verify that claim for a bit.
bit crazy to do this, but especially when we're so close to success, but I really did want again to orbit. And it is quite dark on this terrain. I don't want to land here. Besides that, it looks quite uh, rugged. I don't want to hit any mountains or anything like that. Alright, that's good enough. Let's coast to Apoapsis now. We're still in the atmosphere, so the Apoapsis will go down. Let's uh, target the moon. I have no idea. Uh, I, I am somewhat thinking of uh, the KSC, but I've never ever landed a pod at the KSC. So it is not going to be an easy task, even if I attempt it, because I don't know what uh, the entry altitude should be. Hmm. So we're at the descending node, so we can... Uh, no, the other way. We're still very uh, into the atmosphere. Not critically so. Okay, well that's not doing much. Okie dokie. So... We're on our way to Apoapsis, and we'll be at least landing on the bright side, hopefully. Uh, so we'll have to time warp a little bit to get uh, Kerbin around to where the KSC is on the bright side, if we want to do that sort of thing. Let's see how much orbit is going to take. Don't need to be too far out. Alright, that should be good. I think we have the fuel for that. The mod propellant would be able to bring us back down into the atmosphere if necessary. And in fact, I think our uh, our pod has RCS, so we could even dump this uh, can at that point and continue without it. Alright, well that's us in orbit, despite the best attempts of uh, Kerbin to mess with us. Uh, let me go to the flag on the moon to uh, time warp until the KSC is in the right position, uh, is on the bright side. Uh, let me just double check, make sure orbit is nice and clean. All right, all right, yes, flag on the moon. They've been uh, out in space for hundreds of days already, maybe even thousands for Jeb, so few more hours to make sure they get a uh, good welcome isn't a bad thing. Okay, I really need to set the focus as Kerbin, don't I? There we go. Okay, I see still on the dark side. Alright. All right, that's actually pretty good. Yeah, let's switch back. So yeah, and the, the electric charge actually is fine because we've got these little solar panels here too. So that's why I could leave the lights on. All right, so, I don't know. I don't know exactly where I need to burn and how much in order to bring it down to the KSC should do some tests on it to get the number right sometime. Let me just try... I mean, I don't know what I've tried before. I really should write these things down as far as uh, what I try on re-entry and how it works out. Space planes are easier. I mean, I can hit the KSC runway with a space plane because there's so much cross-range ability with a space plane, but... If an unpowered pod, it's a different story altogether. 
So I'm gonna try and hit uh, twenty. Yeah, let me let me try an overshoot. Maybe thirty kilometers would be an overshoot. Yeah, and then uh, retro burn the best I can in order to bring it down. Hmm. Okay, that's my attempt. I think we still uh, let me use mod propellant here, and then we can because we need the we need the thrust in order to do it over the KSC or close to over the KSC. So I'll want the poodle engine doing that part. Actually, if we're this far off, maybe I should be a little bit lower than 30. No, maybe, maybe this, I keep, I think I, I have the impression that I keep undershooting. Let me keep it to this for now. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's the long time that I'm going to spend in the atmosphere that's probably going to be my undoing. So, maybe I'm going to correct this a little bit. Maybe that'll be better. We'll see. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the lights because our uh, electric charge is diminishing. We'll be going on to light side soon, so that'll be fine. Uh, we don't need to be entering prograde. Come on. Well, we're probably going to get closer than I usually get. But I think I might still undershoot. We're coming in at a really weird angle. Let's see now. Could we boost up a bit? This is very weird to try and do this. Obviously, no sane no sane space agency would do that, but here we are. I wonder how much RCS can help with this. Uh, it would be this direction. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to help. At least I, maybe I'll get on the continent, but that's the best I can do. Like I said, closer than I've gotten so far, but not quite there. Well, there's nothing for it. We can uh, just burn the rest of our fuel going prograde. And even though re-entry prograde is not the best thing to do, do not try this at home, people. Let's right, shade south. All right, well, that's the rest of our fuel. Let's get back retrograde. Just before the serious reentry effects start. And we don't really need the service module anymore, so uh, discard that. Good deal. Hope it doesn't collide with us. We don't have too much control anymore. Oh, hope I don't strike the mountains. <laughs> oh, yeah. After trying to avoid the earlier mountains. 
Oh, it probably is going to happen. That's what I get for trying to get to the KSC, those mountains. All right, well, well tr maybe we should try and get in ahead of those mountains. I think that's possible. Yep. So, closer than I've gotten before with a capsule, but still not quite there. And only thanks to an overabundance of fuel. Obviously the ideal one, I'll, I'll try and figure it out, I really should. Try and figure out exactly where to re-enter at what altitude in order to hit the KSC without using any more fuel. It's just a matter of testing. I mean, it could be a matter of math as well, but uh, that is math beyond me. So, probably a matter of testing. I know the drag equation. I know how to calculate the force of drag on an object. But trying to calculate the balance of force... Yeah, I don't know. Okay, we need parachutes. SA is off. Looks like we're in safe territory as far as terrain is concerned. Bill and Bob don't seem to think so, but Jeb... Well, Jeb's Jeb. I'm sure he's just glad to be seeing Kerbin for the first time in thousands of days. All right, <clears throat> all right, parachutes deployed. And, well, I mean, this is, uh, this is somewhat of a thing. So let's, let's get them all out for a, for a picture. Just plop down, please. Uh, this way. Very good. And let's switch back to it. Bob will probably... Bob and Bill probably won't plop down, I don't think. Alright, uh, a little bit further back, please. Yep, all in a line. Good. Nope, they always want to walk a little bit ahead. Okay, well, it's good enough for me. Yep, there they are. The they're all they all have the same expression. Oh well. Uh, yep. Uh, let's. So that's 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 the. That's definitely the thing. Yep. That's how it, uh, that's almost how it concludes. We want to get them back in there so we can retrieve the vessel. And then get the science from it. Because we do have science on it. Alright, so let's recover the vessel. Oh! Ha! Huh. I think all the experiments are still in the lander pod. <laughs> oh, I forgot to move them over. Oh, well, this is a... So, uh, so maybe we have another mission to retrieve the science from orbit around Duna. Um, but anyway, we did uh, recover the vessel, and we've brought all our Kerbals back. We have left no Kerbals stranded anywhere. I, I don't recall if we actually left lost a Kerbal. 
I, I don't remember. Because I, I, I've got all the other series, and I don't remember whether I lost one in this one or not. Maybe some of you can tell me. But, uh, but we visited all the celestial bodies, and we've done many, many experiments, completed the tech tree, and we had a very good uh, return with our three main Kerbals, Jeb, Bill, and Bob. So I'm quite satisfied. I'll, I'll have to come up with something interesting if I want to continue this series. Uh, I'll think about that. But, uh, and it'll have to be something seriously interesting, not just grabbing science from the orbiting vessel around Duna. That seems a little bit lame. I think we need to do something seriously challenging, like something that I clearly failed at before or something like that. So, so I'll ponder that. But, but, uh, this is the, a good, good way to, uh, cap things off. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions about what I might want to do next, uh, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.